Now back to Inside West Virginia Politics with Mark Curtis. Welcome back to our final segment on Inside West Virginia Politics. We've looked back a lot at 2018. Let's look forward to 2019 a little bit and the big issues coming. Joe, you mentioned the pipelines as your number one issue. Why? Locally, because again, it's going to, it's affecting the economy right now in a positive way jobs, uh, uh, salaries, that sort of thing. Buying things. And buying things and, and sales tax and consumer goods and that sort of thing. That's a very positive thing and we're seeing that overall in the state revenue uh, picture. However, when these jobs go away, are there going to be jobs for these people who took those pipeline jobs that live in the state of West Virginia? And will are they still going to be there when we go back? So there's a lot of question marks when it comes to the pipeline and what's it going to mean, not only to the local economies where the pipeline has been effective and positive, but for the whole state. Yeah, a lot of people ask the same about the road bond jobs. Are there going to be jobs for those folks once all the roads are done and built out? Uh, Jake, you talked about the importance of some of the leadership changes. We're going to have a new of the Finance Committee in the mm -hmm. House. You know, we have a budget's going good now. We had two horrible years. The state has a very volatile economy. What's the significance of the change in leadership at, at finance? Well, I get, you know, one of the most two powerful people in charge of the budget now, the House Finance Chairman, is a new hands. Uh, the former Vice Chairman Eric Householder has it now. Eric Nelson has been, I think, demoted as a safe turn. He's now in charge of banking for the legislature. And so he's kind of weathered the storm these last couple of years. And now that West Virginia has some money to play around with, maybe can loosen, increase, find some new spending. He's not at the helm anymore. This is fascinating because the Democratic leadership on both the House and the Senate is really staying the same. The Republicans have a new majority leader and speaker in the House. They have a new majority leader in the Senate. A lot of changing faces in the committee structure. What do you think the relationship is going to be between the, the Republicans and Democrats? What's going to be the dynamic as we go forth, Brad? You know, the, the numbers are just different as an outcome of the general election. The, the Republican majorities in the House and the Senate are just a little bit smaller, not super majorities anymore. More. So I think just by nature of the numbers, you're going to have to uh, find some areas of agreement. And I wonder about the Republicans themselves, particularly in the House, is the Republican majority truly banded together after going through two leadership fights? Great point. Or are they going to be fractured and maybe that gives... Mm -hmm. Uh, the Democrats an opportunity to, to bring some Republicans over and have more power than they might, or maybe it's just going to be dysfunctional. I'm hearing of a, a silent majority, you're hearing that term again, of some House uh, Republicans that are out there and, and, and just kind of sitting back and waiting. I'm wondering if they're going to fix the medical marijuana bill. A lot of people in the state, it's supposed to be online July 1st. Even the growers tell you they can't have product to market probably by July 1st. I want to talk to Adrian about the election because you covered Carol Miller and she's the, the only new face in our congressional delegation. Uh, tangentially, you had to cover Richard Ojeda, who Absolutely. is now running for president. You covered his kickoff campaign. What are your thoughts on the election and where it's going? <laughs> Especially with, well, it's hard to say, with Carol Miller and Richard Ojeda. Well, this was another story that put West Virginia kind of on the map here. Uh, a lot of people were paying attention to our election during uh, this past November and ultimately it was Carol Miller. People, Republicans across the nation were asking is the Trump effect real? Could Trump get people elected? He certainly thinks he can and he got Carol Miller elected. He threw a lot of weight behind her to get her elected. I thought it was interesting. Richard Ojeda said that night that he lost. He goes, we're looking for the next fight. Next fight is going to be with Donald Trump, one of Carol Miller's biggest supporters. Yeah, this is fascinating. I'm going to make my wacky prediction for 2019. I think a Republican will emerge to challenge Jim Justice in the Republican primary in 2020. Anybody else got any crazy thoughts as we get ready to wrap up? The, we've got two minutes, so we got to fill time. I can't, I can't <laughs> imagine the primary challenge. That's a... Uh, Granted, we don't know. We've never seen Jim Justice run as a Republican, so yeah. I guess that's a brand new thing. But I mean, who's really going to have that kind of money? Who's going to take on the incumbent? Who wants that fight? I, I don't know who's the real. It seems like that would take a pit bull, and I can't think of the pit bull that wants that. Yeah, I don't know who would be, be, but but you you hear whispers in the hallways, and not and more than just whispers. Mm -hmm. A lot of Republicans that you know, they don't like him, and they don't accept him as one of their own, even mm -hmm. though it's been almost there, two years since he switched there parties. There are some names out there that are being batted around a bit and you're going to see an opponent 
come up there in the primary. Right. There, there are some early names out there. All right, here's my other wacky prediction, since nobody else wants to weigh in with their wacky predictions. Don't be surprised if Joe Manchin gives serious consideration to running for governor as a Democrat. Look, he has a free pass if he runs and loses. He's still a U.S. Senator, but he loved being governor. I don't know if he loves being a U.S. Senator as much as he liked being governor. Am I nuts or what? Well, no, I'm you know, Brad's over there with wide eyed and I just went, why not? <laughs> I don't think you're crazy. Yeah, yeah. I think he enjoyed that job much more than he yeah. has enjoyed being a senator. All right. Washington we, sucks. He said it himself. Yeah. He, <laughs> <laughs> all right. And Jake said it, not me. I want to thank Brad McElhenney, Adrian Robbins, Jake Zuckerman, and Joe Stevens. I'm out of breath here and we're out of time, folks. Thanks for watching Inside West Virginia Politics. We'll be back here with plenty more politics in West Virginia in 2019. Thanks so much, folks.